Hi everyone. So in today's video, what I would like to do is um, to take you through the entire process of uh, writing a recipe and the associated diagnostic. So uh, you 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 will see the whole process and how I'm doing it, like um, using Getty. Um, so this is probably going to be a bit fast again so don't hesitate like to pause the video and go back when uh, when needed uh, and uh, so hopefully uh, in the process we will get to discuss some interesting um, aspects of uh, ESM by tool and how the tool works all right so the way I'm doing this um, and again just to quickly I mentioned that there is there's a tutorial available online um, so I will go through some of uh, some of some aspects of uh, how you write a diagnostic and uh, a recipe, uh, but doing it in like in a kind of a quick um, and dirty way, if you want. So um, just to fit like the idea of a short tutorial. Um, all right. So the way I do development uh, is I use uh, Visual Studio Code. I'm going to start uh, Visual Studio Code here. Um, here we go. And so Visual Studio uh, has some interesting extension to do uh, SSH um, connection. So you can use, uh, I'm going to use remote SSH. I'm not going to go through how, uh, how I've configured it, but basically it will give you the option to uh, open a remote window here and connect to host. Uh, so I've got uh, Getty available already. And if I go to uh, the File Explorer, here I can open a folder on uh, Gaddy, so a remote folder. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work in, on Scratch. So TM70 is the XSNRI uh, project. So use your your own, please. And I'm going to go to a folder called ESM by Tool. We go. Just gonna close this one. Open a terminal so that we have a nice terminal at the bottom of our screen, so that we can. I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger, and we should be all set. So that gives me a terminal. I can look around. And what can I can do uh, here? I've, I've prepared the output, the PNG output of what we're going to do today, and so I'm going to show you. Um, so VS Code gives you also the um, the option to open images. So this is basically what we're going to try to um, to reproduce today from scratch. So a map of Australia with surface air temperature controlled only on the on the land. So with so using a, a mask and um, so there are obviously many ways to do this. I'm going to show you one way. Um, so don't get. Um, I mean, you 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 may have like a different way of doing things. So uh, feel free to comment and and do the things your way. Okay, so let's clear this. Um, and I'm gonna move that image to um, folder. Go. So let's create a folder called tutorial so it should appear in my file explorer on the side you could also use like um, 
the GUI if you want. That's that's obviously an option. All right. Um, okay. And um, let's see what's next. So, um, so to write a recipe, what you need is obviously a recipe YAML file. So I've discussed the format in uh, in the previous video. Or if you haven't seen it, like uh, don't hesitate to have a look. So we're just gonna create um, a file. called uh, recipe australia dot yml we go and i'm gonna create a diagnostics that is called um, australia dot py so a python diagnostic uh, this is still showing here it's oh this is in the wrong Folder. So I'm just going to move things in the right folder. Here we go. Here we go. So so let's try. Uh, let's start by writing our recipe. So and I'll go through the, the different uh, things we need to do there. Uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger again. Okay, so uh, first two lines, in, in, it's always good to start saying that it's an ASMVAL tool file and we call it uh, recipe australia.yml. All right, so we've got a nice header now. Um, so you need like, um, some high level uh, sections. Uh, the first one is the documentation. Uh, the next one is the data sets. Um, then we need some preprocessors. And finally, uh, we're going to need some diagnostics. Okay. All right. So these are my uh, different sections just gonna put a bit of space between them that's the minimum needed uh, okay so that but if you run that recipe now it's gonna fail because it cannot find information around documentation but this is the uh, the start of our structure so let's let's keep going we're gonna add some description about what we want to do um, Australia uh, map uh, temperature anomaly, may, for example. We need a title. Australia. So nothing very fancy here. Uh, Australia temperature anomalies. Um, let's add some offers. Um, so I'm going to put myself, Boucher, Omar. Uh, maintainers uh, myself as well um, we could we could have some a project um, so we have a um, if you use Gaddy there's a project called access and I um, the important point here is, is to understand that offers maintenance and project actually refers to they refer to um, um, keywords that are um, in uh, the assembly tool reference uh, database um, so it needs to be added so if your name is probably not there um, we could add it if, if you like or the easiest is probably just to use uh, a name that's already there so use mine or someone from the, uh, uh, the assembly tool uh, team all right, so and now we've got our documentation. Um, so the interesting thing we could we can do is actually we can try to test uh, uh, live things live um, by creating um, 
by opening a, uh, an interactive interactive job on Getty. So what I can do is um, I can uh, submit a request to uh, PBS. So let's let's write um, a job PBS file with some request um, some resources request. Um, so what are we gonna do? Um, so let's let's write our, our script live. Uh, so this is a bash script. We should online. Um, um, using the IQ eighty two uh, compute project. Again, this is an access and I specific project, so um use your your own and so i'm gonna request um, some uh, mounts xp65 because that's where ISMBAL tool is installed and i'm gonna access uh request access to um the cmip6 uh, data collection so g data um FS38, OI10, um, and uh, what I like to add to is um, um, CT11, which is the access NI um, collection for, uh, I mean, replica for uh, of observational data sets for model evaluation. Uh, that's a flag for I mean to use the working directory. Uh, we can ask uh, a queue. Normal queue will be fine, I believe. Um, or let's let's ask copy queue just in case we need access to the internet. Um, PBS uh, wall time of four hours should be more than enough. Um, and uh, we need to request some actual um, resources, so which is um, some memory. So let's do uh, 32 gigabyte is more than enough. Actually, let's do 16 gigabyte. We no need to ask for more. Um, and um, and just. Um, one CP, that's okay. Okay, it's so good. I think we are all set. I'm gonna save the file. And in my, uh, so I've got, you can't see because it's behind my my webcam, but so I've got two uh, bash session here. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna request. Um, oh, do uh, so I need to move all those files into the tutorial folder? I'll be better. I will provide a copy of um, the output so that you can add videos uh, from. Um, can use it. Um, oh, forgot to save it. Um, there we go. All right, and uh, let's uh, submit a request. There we go. So that should load now. We can go back to our. Um, of a terminal on the logging node, and I'm just going to reopen the recipe um, of Australia. Okay, so now next section, session, section, sorry. Um, we need some data sets. Um, so for data sets, we're going to use, um, I've, I've chosen to use one of um, 
uh, the access uh, ESM um, 1.5 uh, submitted to SEMIP6. So I'm just going to mention the SEMIP6 project. Um, we're going to look at the um, monthly atmosphere. Yep. And the historical ex experiment. Um, we can uh, define the, an ensemble. Um, so I do it like I've got I've got another uh, window open. You cannot see, so don't worry. I'm not doing this uh, from memory, right? Uh, and ensemble uh, R one E one P one F one using the grid uh, G N, and you can specify. Um, at like a time range so starting from let's say 1971 uh, to uh, I think uh, let me check what's available I can do um, 2013 for example okay and so that's that's one data set right um, let's say this So ESM tool is gonna find that um, that data set for us, um, but um, just to quickly show you um, where it is on Getty. Um, so this is the same IP6 um, access CSM uh, publication. So it's in the um, G data uh, FS38 project. And CMIP6. Um, so yes, uh, Embedu knows about that. That's part of um, uh, the configuration. So you don't have to worry about this. But I'm I'm just showing you so that um, uh, we know um, what we're talking about. Uh, so access ESM. Uh, then we've got uh, we've just going down the DRS, like the uh, same DRS, you can go to historical, and that's where we've got all the ensembles, okay? And we ask for R1, I1, F1, okay? Uh, and we also ask for Aemon, and, uh, and that's it, I believe, all right? Okay? All right, so let's just go back to our tutorial. So we've defined like some documentation, uh, like in important metadata information, um, and we've got data one data set. Um, for now, we don't have any preprocessors, uh, and um, we don't have any diagnostics. So preprocessors, you, um, well, you don't need to have preprocessors. You could just, um, uh, use the data directly if it fits if it if it fits your needs. Um, but of course you need to have um, you need you need the diagnostic. So actually it's not entirely true. I could pass uh, a, like um, a null value to diagnostics and but the the recipe will do like basically nothing. Um, so which, which is like kind of uh, uh, useless. All right, um, I'm gonna start with diagnostics now, okay? So I'm gonna uh, create one diagnostic and called uh, Australia monthly uh, temperatures, temperature, sorry. Uh, we can add some description. Uh, let's say it's going to be about uh, visualizing the monthly uh, temperature for Australia. Okay. And uh, and then you need to define some variables you want to process. So again, you name your vi the variables. Um, 
Uh, so um, I'm just gonna have one, and I'm gonna name it surface temperature. So ASM file tool already know the data set we're gonna use. It knows that it's from VM and MIP. Um, so it needs a bit more information to extract the right data, right? So for now, uh, surface temperature, um, and it's probably gonna struggle to find it, but we can pass the name, uh, like a short name, TAS, which is uh, from the semi vocabulary. So we know where to find it. And for now, uh, we don't have any preprocessor. Okay, so we just tell it where to find the variable. Uh, and uh, so, the diagnostic needs like two things: it needs a set of variables, and it needs uh, some scripts to run. Um, so we're going to use one script called. Australia uh, map and uh, give it a, a path to uh, a script and uh, for now I'm just going to use uh, nil just for the sake of uh, um, slowly taking you through like the process of, write of uh, writing um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the path to our Python file we've just created. So it, it has to be um, um, full the full path. Uh, I mean, in development, it's better to use the full path. I think I've I've tried to use relative path, but it's not um, it's not always like behaving as expected. So I think the, the best way is just to uh, to use. Um, the full path and the script is called australia.py okay and just quickly I'm gonna add the shebang to my uh, Python script just to make it to so that we know it's um, a Python script. Um, all right. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try to run that recipe, which for now doesn't do anything. Okay. So I'm going back to my um, over terminal, uh, which is now. Uh, an interactive job on the queue system, and I'm going to load uh, ESM val tool uh, module use. Yeah. Ah, module load ESM val tool. Go. And I need to ah I forgot to load um, to mount TM seventy. That's okay. Let me fix this quickly. So let's go back to our job PBS, and we need to add she that uh, scratch. Sorry. TM seventy. All right, let's save this. And submit the request again. Okay, so now we've got a new interactive session. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, To reload ESM by tool. There we go. And we can now 
move to TM70 tutorial. All right, so I'm now in the tutorial folder. If I ls, I can see I've got the ABCP Australia, my uh, um, diagnostic script, and the job, uh, the PPS file that I use to request uh, resources on Gaddy. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to run the ABCP Aust uh, Australia, and let's see how it goes. All right, so like just to show you live, uh, it failed and it failed for, uh, so you need you need to have a look at the log file. It's, it's always useful and a good exercise. Uh, there's uh, a type error here, argument of type, no, of type non type is not iterable. And the reason being, uh, so it tells you that something is in preprocessors. So I suspect like the issue is because I don't have any preprocessor uh, defined. Um, so which means that probably uh, we're gonna need to, to add one. Um, I'd be curious to see what uh, what happens if I remove the preprocessor altogether. But um, just like I'm not gonna do this now because I need I need the video to be relatively short. Um, so let's uh, move on and ask some and add some preprocessors. Okay, so what kind of preprocessor do we need? Um, so we've got a data set uh, with some um, like a temperature field that we want to use. Um, so and uh, the idea is to to do a map and calculate some uh, climate climatic climate anomalies. Sorry. Um, and we want and let's do something a bit uh, more advanced. We we've we've defined a range like um, time range from 1971 to 2013, but we want. We're just gonna extract one year uh, from this. So the example—it's kind of a dummy example because I could, uh, I could just ask for a range here of one year range. Okay. Um, uh, but what we want to do is actually we're gonna calculate an anomaly. Okay. So we want a broader, like a larger time range, because we're gonna define uh, a reference period. On, for which we're going to calculate the anomaly uh, for a specific year. Okay, so let's start uh, defining some preprocessor. So I'm I'm just going to do one preprocessor, and I'm going to call it um, something can be anything. Okay, uh, let's call it uh, call it extract data. And what I want to do is I'm going to use one of the preprocessors uh, from ESMVal tool uh, uh, that's called um, anomalies. All right, so anomalies. Um, maybe we can quickly have a look at um, the documentation online. So I always have the documentation open uh, when I do this because um, well, there's a lot of information available. And let's search for um, preprocessors, okay? And I'm gonna go to preprocessor pre function, um, documentation, music video, No, what I want is actually uh, the API. I can we I can actually do a search for preprocessors anomalies maybe. Here we go. So taking back to preprocessor functions anomalies. 
So uh, what it does, it compute the anomalies using a mean with a specified granularity, okay? And so it needs a few things. Uh, it needs a, uh, a reference, uh, a period, And of course, it takes a cube as an input, but that's that's done internally, right? So you don't have to worry about that. So you need to define a period, you need to define a reference, uh, and then you've got some uh, optional options uh, like standardize uh, to standardize the anomalies that are calculated. Uh, and there's another season, um, season option that we won't use today, okay? All right, so let's go back to our um, work. Okay, so anomalies. As I mentioned, it needs a period. It needs a reference. And we were just going to have, and there's a, an optional that is uh, standardized that we're going to set to false which I think is the default right if I go back to my web page yes so period can be um, anything from like full season seasonal monthly month month daily day hourly or etc we're going to use uh, monthly okay and we need to define uh, a reference. So talking about the reference period here. And so the reference period, again, going back to the documentation, period of time to use a reference as needed for the extract time preprocessor function. All right, interesting. So that means we, we need to have a look at the extract time preprocessor and um, to understand what uh, that preprocessor needs. So it needs a cube. Again, ESM value tool will pass that by default. Um, it needs a start year, start month, start day, end year, end month, end day. All of these being uh, required, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead with this. Um, so start year, start, um, month, start day, uh, and then we've got a year, and month, and day, okay? So the reference period, we're going to define it over like, I mean, from 1971, 1st of January to the year 2000, 30 last, last day of the year, like 31st December 2000, okay? And we've got our preprocessor, okay? So let's save this. I'm gonna clear the terminal here, All right? Um, and let's let's try and see how how it goes. So, I'm just gonna rerun it again, and let's see how it goes. And I just got a uh, find does not exist error because um, my path is wrong. Path is ESM val tool tutorial. Okay, let's try again. Just clearing this. Here we go. And we have a successful run. Interesting. Good. Okay. Um, so there's no output, obviously, because it's not doing anything. And 
I'm just going to check and quickly check my ESM Bell tool configuration just to check where uh, the, the tools um, is storing uh, the output. Uh, the output. Oh yeah, so I've predefined it to be in Scratch IQ82. Um, so I'm just going to change this so that we have, um, this is the default. Um, so I had like a custom um, setup from a previous run. And uh, I can actually rerun ESM Val tool on our recipe and see what, what happens. Okay, run successful again. And now if you look at my file explorer there or here, I've got an ESMVAL tool output folder and there is a, an output for recipe Australia with just one folder, a run folder, because well, we haven't done much right in that uh, that 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 recipe for now is basically doing nothing. Um, the preprocessor is not called if it's not needed by a, a diagnostic. So and we haven't um, so we haven't listed uh, any preprocessor there, right? Uh, but you can see that in the run folder there there is like uh, some some interest um, uh, log information on resource usage uh, and debug log. There's a copy of the uh, of our recipe. And there's actually a copy with some uh, extra information that um, uh, ESM Val tool is is, um, is adding for you. Um, um, just out of curiosity, we can look at what is is done. Oh, I can't do that, of course. So if we look at Australia field, yeah, it has completed like the information about uh, the surface temperature and it also has specified the data set used by our diagnostics which is the access ESM 1.5 here so this is basically a clean version of our recipe so it's used it's probably what you would eventually uh, uh, submit to, um, if you wanted to um, submit a pull request to um, uh, the uh, ESM Val tool GitHub repository. All right, let's go back to our recipe. So for now, it's not doing anything, but it's running. Okay, um, let's just like clean that output. So just so just quickly to mention that that folder has a a tag, a time date. Um, so. Technically, we could just keep it, but it's it's always a, it's a bit of a pain just to we we don't need it anyway. So what I'm going to do now, just to illustrate a bit further how things work, I'm going to add a preprocessor here. Well, I'm going to explicitly say that I want to use one of the preprocessors that I've defined above, and there's only one, so it's easy. So we're just calling extract data. So now that it's it's called, it's specified here. ESM Val tool is gonna run the diagnostic, see that it needs to to get a surface temperature from our data set there, which is one data set here, and uh, pass it to the preprocessor extract data and the preprocessor is going to run uh, it's going to calculate uh, the anomalies like monthly anomalies using a reference period from 1971 to 2000 okay so let's save this and uh, run it again and see how it goes Right, success again. Um, okay, so now I'm using 
let's have a look at the output so we've got the recipe Australia uh, blah, blah, blah. And the interesting thing is that, yeah, so that hasn't done much, actually. <laughs> so it hasn't saved the preprocessor information. Why is that? That's interesting. OK. Um, what thing it could be, and then we're going to do that, this live again, is looking at the configure, my configure the file. There's an option for um, preprocessor. Remove preprocessor directory. Okay, it's set to true. All right, so I'm doing it live for you. There's obviously you could have could have avoid, uh, avoided this, but um, I'm just going to set it to false. I clean my folder again and um, run the assemble tool run again right okay so now let's have a look at the output and now I've got a preprocessor uh, folder okay so Make this a bit bigger. And so we've got the output for um, the Australia monthly temperature diagnostics. Define that called uh, a preprocessor. Uh, and yeah, and then uh, in that folder, sorry here what's going to happen here is the list of uh, variables so we've got one variable that we call surface temperature let's have a look and so we have a new netcdf file it's the output of our preprocessor some provenance information and some metadata or yml so uh, esml tool has a great um, system for provenance um, you can open these things um, and have a look, explore. But it's basically some information that is passed uh, from the preprocessor to uh, the diagnostic script. So we'll, we'll exp I will explain a bit further now, um, down the track what, what this does. But yeah, OK, so our preprocessor is working, um, which is great. Um, Go back now to our um, recipe. So what? So what I mentioned before is I want to calculate some anomalies. So that first, that preprocessor is going to extract the data and calculate the anomaly, um, the monthly anomalies uh, using that reference period. Um, but I, I don't want to pass um, this is going to calculate the anomalies for the entire period of our data set right um, so from 1971 to 2013 um, so what what we want to do is we just want to extract one year um, so so we can uh, we can add another um, Preprocessor uh, just to extract a specific year. Um, so we, we've discussed the extract time uh, preprocessor before, it's basically the same as here. Um, so actually, I could just copy and paste this to go a bit faster. And what I'm going to say is I just want to um, extract one year. Um, and that year is going to be 2013. Right? 
So I now, I now have like still one preprocessor, but after like calculating the anomaly, I do uh, the extra, I extract one year, actually 2013. Um, here we've got a special case because um, so, so the assembler tool has um, a predefined order in which it, it, it runs the, um, um, the preprocessors. And now we, in our case, we kind of want to force it. So I'm going to use uh, an extra option called uh, custom order and set it to true to force it to be first calculate the anomaly, then extract uh, the year 2030. Some details you, you don't usually don't see this in the recipes, um, but it's just like something uh, I'm doing here. OK, for the sake of the example. Uh, and I believe our recipe is, is ready to, to go. Uh, the only thing missing is an actual diagnostic, diagnostic because our Python script doesn't do anything. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to pause now and I'll be back uh, to discuss uh, how to write a diagnostic. All right. So, uh, so we have we have a recipe uh, that runs um, and calls some uh, preprocessor preprocessors if you want. Um, all you need to do now is I mean to actually create I mean a, a diagnostic, okay? Because for now diagnostic is not doing anything. Uh, there is nothing in our Python five. All right, so. Um, as I said, the SMVAL tool is, is relatively language agnostic. You could, uh, you can uh, write your uh, diagnostics in uh, Python, R, Julia, NCL language. Um, and there, there will be options to, to go further than that, actually, if, if, if needed. <clears throat> but that covers like 99.9% .9 of uh, the needs. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and uh, let's write our diagnostic, okay? <clears throat> so, what do we need? To write the diagnostic, um, so there's a few things that are needed. Um, we need to uh, import uh, some function from uh, ESM tool. Uh, so and one of them is um, let me see oh. <clears throat> we need to at the bare minimum we need like a way to call the script from Python so typically that's I forgot how we call that in Python, but it's a way. So it it, it makes the Python uh, script like um, uh, directly executable. And the you need um, you call a function called run diagnostics as config, and you pass it to a main function. So. People know a bit, of, a bit, a bit, a bit of about Python. Would just like tell me, okay, so what's that run diagnostics uh, diagnostic function? So it's a function that you get from uh, ESM Val tool, and and there's like um, uh, basically retrieved information from um, ESM Val core uh, and the preprocessor. So it's a way to access. Um, the metadata and all the details of uh, what um, what's happening in the recipe. Okay, and so it's called uh, from ESM Val tool uh, diag uh, scripts shared, uh, and you do uh, you import run diagnostic. <clears throat> we go, and of course what we need here is a main function to call. 
All right, so let's start. Let's start with the main function. Typically, the main function will take a configuration as an argument. So I'm just going to call it CFG here in uh, just to make it slightly different. And um, so what we want to do in that function is we want to retrieve um, the data that ESMVal tool um, is passing to our diagnostic script. Diagnostic script. Uh, so and it's we can retrieve it from the config object, and uh, we get we config object is is uh, basically a, a, a dictionary, Python dictionary structure. Um, and you can, this is how you access uh, the values, the input data values. All right, so just some clarification about what I'm doing here. If we go uh, to our ESMVal tool output folder, which I have uh, deleted, so I'm going to run it again just to, re um, to generate some outputs. Here we go. Let's go to ESMVal tool. If we go in the run folder, you'll see that there's um, for each diagnostic, so there's a folder, and in that case, we only have one diagnostic, so it's called Australia Monthly Temperature. And uh, Australia Map. There's a file called settings.yml. And that file contains uh, basically the information passed uh, to the diagnostic script and you can see that input file that we're calling from our config uh, dictionary here basically contains path to uh, our preprocess uh, data set that are located in the preprocess uh, folder uh, it also uh, retrieves information from that preprocess uh, folder which also contains some uh, metadata so I can quickly go there and show you um, that there is like some metadata there uh, with some information that are also passed uh, to the, um, your diagnostics. So all these things you can access basically from the config um, uh, dictionary here. So that basically tells you how I mean you need to be aware of that so it's, that's how you access data okay so I'm, I'm, I'm getting my input data <clears throat> so going back to our recipe we could have several variables here which means several data sets like with different uh, uh, potentially different preprocessor called um, so the, um, the input data here that is returned when we call that um, our, com of, of our dictionary is actually a list of outputs. So we want to we want to loop over these. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly write a loop. Uh, I'm gonna uh, so first of all uh, load the data put file equal uh, data set so for each data set I have a file name again you refer like if you want the detail you can refer to the settings dot um, uh, um, ym yeah file that I, I just mentioned uh, so each data set has a name you can access the variable group and the data <coughs> so we're going to open the data with XRA in that case we could we could use something else we 
go. So I'm just opening the data, which means I need to make sure that I, I can import XRA. So I'm just going to add the import statement at the beginning. As XR, there we go. <clears throat> and just for the sake of, uh, I'm gonna call like some standard library, like path library from Python, just to have a bit of. Okay, so I'm looping through the data set inside the input data that I retrieve from my config object and I, I'm extracting the data. It's basically all I'm doing. Um, so now I need to um, do some um, something with it. So I'm gonna use um, matplotlib and call a function called plot Australia that returns a, a figure object from a, a matplotlib figure object. And then what I will do is I will I will uh, um, save the output to um, to the disk. Uh, so I'm just like I'm just uh, gonna. Uh, slightly change the name of um, the input file uh, to create an output. Here we go. So using the name from the variable group. <coughs> and uh, define an output path. So there's, there's a convenient um, function uh, that we can get from ESMBAL tool. Oops, sorry. Diag uh, script shared. It's actually an hidden function, but. <laughs> Let's let's go ahead. Just a way like to I, I'm using an example that I've I've, I've used before. <coughs> so it just done some it's just doing a bit of magic here, but that's 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 all right. You just create an output path. You could uh, out code it. Uh, it's all good. Um, output file and it needs to pass the config as well. And we want to save uh, our uh, future matplotlib figure object to that path. Okay. Okay. But for now, so I've got a, a plot of Australia uh, function that doesn't exist yet, that returns a matplotlib figure object that doesn't exist yet. So let's move on and we define a plot of Australia function. And that's going to return a figure object. Okay. All right. So um, it's not really so. It's not meant to be um, a tutorial on how to use Matplotlib. So I'm going to cheat. Um, cheat a bit here, and I'm just going to. Um, quickly uh, copy and paste uh, a plot function. That I've written before. There we go. And so I will just like suggest you have a look at uh, it uh, when you have time basically all the I mean it's the recipe on how to write um, uh, 
the, the well, on how to reproduce the figure I've, I've shown at the beginning. And I've got a couple of uh, utility, function, utility functions that I need to uh, basically a function to retrieve a polygon for Australia because in that case I'm doing the mas uh, masking using Cartopy and uh, and that masking is done by basically uh, subtracting that polygon from a rectang rectangle that covers the um, the map area so um, nothing crazy but um, happy to answer your question if you need uh, or you can just uh, look at the code uh, if you need I'm just gonna add some import statement statements at the beginning uh, basically calling some uh, uh, shapefile um, Python objects uh, cartopy to read the shapefiles um, and uh, cartopy to do some uh, projection and uh, plot some maps um, just quickly to mention that here I'm, I'm using uh, uh, data from natural earth and this is already available. Uh, this is made available through the uh, uh, auxiliary uh, data set like, um, that you can access from, uh, from ESMVal tool. Uh, no, no, actually that's not true here in that case. I use, I download it, okay? Which means you need access to the internet from your queue. Um, yeah. Anyway, so just something to keep in mind. Um, yes. <clears throat> okay. All right, and that's so uh, that's basically our, our diagnostic. So, um, oh, one thing I, I forgot is that function here need some argument all of this is basic Python okay um, so we pass the data we pass the name and we pass a color map color map that needs to be defined by the way so I'm just gonna hard code it here But I could I could pass it uh, from the recipe, um, so add some uh, options to uh, the script. Uh, so how to do that? Um, so I, I could have like um, a color map. Um, keyword here and pass reds instead is it oh it's not it's cool warm sorry cool warm and uh, which means I could retrieve this from the um, um, I could do something like this right Okay, um, let's leave it like this for now. Uh, all right, so, and I think we're ready to run it. If I haven't um, done anything wrong. Okay, and so let's just go back to our interactive session. We have a successful run. So go to SMVAL 
output and I take the last one which is uh, 243 15 I'm just gonna clear clean the others delete All right uh, we've got some plots hopefully there and we can have a look and here is our map All right okay so what else do we need to do um, that's basically it but just a few things I want to mention so here in that case we only have one data set okay we could add another one um, let's say we want to to use another uh, ensemble so I'm not sure which ones are available um, let's have a quick look um, FS38 uh, semi uh, published semip6 um, semip historical um, and we could pick uh, any one of them uh, let's say I want to I want to do this one All right so now I've got two data sets um, so if we run this again Going back to here, there we go. So we get another successful run. Um, and looking at the latest one, if we go to plots, we've got now two plots one for each ensemble and you you notice that they are quite different because the um, the way we I'm scaling the color map is uh, is different All right so something to maybe modify uh, so that's one thing um, if we want to we could have we could also do um, instead of having one variable we could have multiple variables so I, I could we could have one for uh, let's say precipitation so let's add one for precipitation uh, just using exactly the same um, um, preprocessor uh, and just call it precipitation there we go we can try that again Okay, and so this is actually failing, and the reason it's failing is because my script is not general enough. I am calling the task variable somewhere here, um, so it's it's failing for uh, precipitation. Uh, all right, um, so it's yeah. So the, you you get the idea, I'm, and you just need to. Um, to make that script a bit more uh, flexible, uh, which I, I try to do it and uh, and give it to um, and create a repo uh, a repository. But that's the idea. So you could have like multiple um, data set here for multiple models. Um, uh, we could have like uh, more preprocessors and use a specific preprocessor for the precipitation. Um, we could have like another diagnostic that is specific to precipitation, um, which calls the um, the the could be the same, same script, but just with different information, so that the script is responding differently. All, all sorts of things that are possible. All right. Okay. So so this. Um, so this was just like a walkthrough, like to try, try to explain how uh, things work. Uh, I went like way too fast. I'm aware of that, and uh, and the script like is is I mean is far from being optimal. Uh, we could do things a lot better, uh, but you get the idea, and uh, I hope it's it's been useful. Um, 
right as usual uh, you can uh, request help uh, on the hive on the access hive um, so I strongly encourage you to do it um, and uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much it for today thank you very much